Uh, welcome back to lecture number five of uh, unit number four, ventilation and infiltration. In fact, this will be the last lecture of unit number four. Uh, in this lecture, we'll discuss the types of air distribution devices. Previous lecture, we have discussed uh, the performance parameters of space air distributions and some design aspects of any uh, air distribution devices. So this lecture will discuss the various types of air distribution devices used in air conditioning systems. Uh, the first type is grills and register. Uh, grills, uh, grill is an outlet for supply air or an inlet for return air. Uh, so it's uh, like this mesh structure. This is called as grill. And register is a grill uh, with a volume control damper. So register, the difference between grill and uh, damper is that. So a grill and register is that. So register is provided with the volume control damper. Uh, so the vents are either fixed or adjustable. So adjustable vents are used for deflecting the airflow. Uh, grills have a comparatively low entrainment ratio uh, as it's a throw. It has a greater drop and longer throw uh, with higher air velocities. Uh, comparatively, its entrainment ratio is uh, lower than uh, that of slot type and ceiling type diffuser that we'll discuss in next. Uh, so these grills are especially used, uh, uh, this is fitted at the side walls, especially uh, in the large height uh, buildings uh, like auditorium theater, the grills and registers are used. Uh, ceiling diffusers, ceiling diffuser mainly consists of concentric rings uh, or inner cones uh, made up of vents arranged in fixed directions. Ceiling diffuser can be a round type. <coughs> can be a square type or rectangle shape. Uh, these are the different types of ceiling diffusers are used. As the name implies, they are generally fitted at the ceiling of the uh, building. And uh, this is a 2D diagram of a square and rectangle ceiling diffuser where the air comes inside uh, and uh, flows through the fixed vents. So these are the fixed vents and this is ceiling. Uh, generally fitted at the ceiling and uh, this is the figure where the perforated uh, diffusers are used so this is a perforated diffuser uh, so instead of slots the perforations are provided so the pictorial view of perforated diffuser is like this uh, square diffuser is widely used for supply air uh, this is square diffuser generally widely used on the supply air in the diffuser, uh, in the diffuser, the supply air discharges through the concentric air passages. So these are the concentric passages. Through these passages, generally the air uh, discharges, and uh, uh, the air uh, distribution pattern can be changed by adjusting uh, the adjustable inner cones. So this cone can be adjustable, or deflecting the vanes as well. If the vanes are there inner side, so vanes can also be deflected uh, to. Uh, change the pattern spread of the diffuser. Uh, so ceiling diffuser have a greater spread uh, and normally mounted at the center of the condition space. And they are provided with the large entrainment ratio because of the greater spread. Uh, they have a shorter throw and hence are suitable for high supply air temperatures and for condition spaces with low head space. Uh, uh, means uh, ceiling diffusers can deliver more air compared to the grill and slot diffusers uh, because uh, uh, but the constraint is that uh, it should the head that height of the building should be uh, small it's not more than uh, 14 feet so if it exceeds 14 feet generally the grills and registers are suitable uh, uh, means of the small offices uh, or uh, uh, other or commercial buildings, uh, generally the ceiling diffusers are used. Uh, then the third type is a slot diffusers. A slot diffuser consists of plenum box with a single or multiple slots and air deflecting vanes. And these are mounted either on the side uh, walls or in the ceiling. Linear slot diffusers mounted on the side wall uh, can be uh, as long as 30 meters. So linear slide, uh, if they are mounted on the side walls, uh, can be uh, 30 meters long. And these are used for both supply air and return air. 
linear slot diffusers are particularly suitable for large open spaces that require flexibility to suit uh, changing occupier uh, distribution. So figure A it show and B uh, figure A and B shows a photograph of conditional space with linear uh, diffusers mounted in the ceiling. Uh, so these are fitted in the either passages or lobbies. Uh, these are the linear slot diffusers. Uh, so depending upon the applications, uh, these three types of uh, diffusers are commonly used. Uh, once I revise that grills and registers, they are generally used uh, if the ceiling height exceeds 14 feet, uh, like auditorium and theater. Uh, the dip ceiling diffusers are used for the uh, especially small height, uh, where the air distribution is good, but uh, velocity is comparatively less. The ceiling diffuser has lower to shorter throw and drop but entertainment ratio is more and slot diffusers are generally uh, preferred in uh, the passages or lobbies uh, where uh, these are the single or multiple slots are provided uh, and uh, with uh, deflecting vents so these are the three types of uh, uh, diffusers commonly used but in addition to that uh, one special type of uh, diffuser is that is called the light proffer light truffle diffuser combines a fluorescent light uh, truffle and a slot diffuser. The slot can be used uh, either as a supply air outlet or return air inlet. So uh, this is the slot provided and here uh, the fluorescent lamps are there. So the air uh, which generally flows through these particular slots. Uh, it may be a return uh, air or supply air. So, uh, because uh, the luminous efficiency of the fluorescent lamp can be increased uh, because the cooling takes place to uh, uh, of the return air, uh, it improves the aesthetic as well. Because in light itself, uh, the diffusers are there, so no separate diffusers are required. It is a comma like this. Uh, it is uh, uh, this is a slot diffuser with the fluorescent lamp. So. Uh, generally, it is suitable uh, for the return air. So combination of light proffer and return slot reduces the space cooling load as the return air absorbs part of the heat emitted by the light. However, they should be designed such that the return air doesn't come in uh, direct contact with the tube so that the deposition of the dust on the fluorescent tube is prevented. Uh, so uh, in summary, with these uh, a light proffer diffusers, they are generally suitable for return air uh, because uh, while returning that air through return duct, it also uh, does the function of cooling of the fluorescent lamp. And because of this cooling, the luminous efficiency of the fluorescent lamp increases. Uh, uh, but uh, the care should be taken. There should not be any direct contact of uh, lamp and uh, outgoing air because outgoing air is uh, mainly a contaminant air. So the dust accumulation takes place on the bulb. So direct contact is uh, avoided, but uh, through uh, some surface, the uh, cooling takes place. So these are the three types of, uh, uh, or four types of air diffusers are used. Uh, uh, these diffusers are uh, mainly uh, exhibit certain uh, airflow pattern characteristics. Uh, mainly the entertainment of the room air to reduce the air temperature and velocity in the occupied zone to acceptable levels. Uh, so it should uh, uh, create that entertainment of the room air. So that should be a proper turbulence of the room air uh, happen. Uh, then the reverse air stream in the occupied zone for an every velocity and temperature distribution must occur. Uh, it, so whatever the air distribution system, it must create that reverse air stream uh, in order to create a room turbulence. Uh, it should minimize the stagnation area in the occupied zone. So stagnation area uh, is the zone in which a natural convection current prevails, uh, and uh, the velocity is less than about 0.1 meter per second. So reverse air stream reduces the stagnation area in the occupied zone. These are the three uh, uh, requirements, uh, three basic characteristics of uh, air, uh, uh, air pattern, airflow pattern. The airflow pattern in the condition space is influenced mainly by the type and location of supply air outlets. 
the high side outlets uh, that is a register or grills they are generally fitted at the uh, higher side walls uh, ceiling diffusers and slot diffusers are most commonly used in air conditioning buildings uh, so we'll discuss the pattern due to high side outlets that is grills or uh, registers so a uh, figure shows the air flow pattern using high side outlets installed on high side walls for cooling and heating applications as the air discharges from the high side outlet so uh, for this is a side wall and from this side wall as the air discharges uh, from the high side due to a uh, surface effect uh, surface effect is also called as a ponoda effect the air jet tends to stick the ceiling as shown in the figure and for cooling up uh, application the cold supply air entrains the room air and deflects downwards uh, when it strikes the opposite wall like this uh, and the reverse flow is taking place so this is a, a side view of a cooling process uh, so obviously cooling during cooling process uh, the density of the air is high and due to this high density the air flow falls down when it pick up the heat it again recirculates so this way uh, it uh, creates a reverse uh, air stream as well so this is side view uh, from the end view we can see uh, it also creates a throw or uh, the drop we can say uh, through through we can understand here so it has a greater, greater throw and a longer drop as well uh, now the spread is also we can realize from the uh, top view this is a spread uh, for heating a stagnation zone may form because for heating application if the hot air is if it is injected from the top uh, generally being a, a lighter density the air remains at the top and so it creates a stagnation area especially at the lower zone uh, because air doesn't come there so the air at the lower zone has a dense air so the natural circulation doesn't take place so the velocity may reduce below 0.1 meter per second so stagnation area it creates so there is a possibility of uh, river uh, there is a possibility of stagnant uh, air becomes stagnant in this particular zone and the reverse flow is only at the upper zone so that is a, a difficulty with uh, this type of uh, uh, diffuser it creates a stagnation zone in the during the heating application however if the throw is long uh, uh, if throw is long the reverse flow can minimize the stagnation area during the heating so the longer throw can create a, uh, because it, if it strikes on the opposite wall obviously it creates a reverse uh, flow for high side wall uh, for high side uh, outlet uh, the most suitable location for return air inlet is on the ceiling outside the air jet as shown in figure uh, so uh, this is a jet of air so uh, this is a most uh, suitable location for return uh, air uh, return out return inlet so it doesn't comes in contact with the supply air so obviously only the uh, the cold air it can exit so uh, so generally for high side uh, the most suitable location is this so these are the flow patterns associated with the high side outlets uh, it uh, produces a greater throw greater drop uh, but a less entrainment uh, because of the jet high velocity jet uh, but uh, mainly uh, during the heating applications it uh, there is a possibility of uh, a stagnation at the lower zone but that can be minimized by uh, creating a longer throw uh, if the longer throw reaches to the opposite wall then uh, there is a possibility of reverse flow so this is about the uh, pattern of high side outlets like grills or register uh, uh, this is a, a practical example of uh, grill and uh, registers so the grill and register are generally fitted in our uh, domestic refrigerator indoor unit and it creates such kind of throws uh, and jet of velocity uh, then the patterns due to ceiling diffuser so these are the different patterns of ceiling diffusers uh, so a figure shows air flow pattern using ceiling diffusers for both cooling and heating applications it is seen that the ceiling diffusers produce a shorter throw if you see from uh, the end view 
and even from the side view, the throw is very short. Uh, a lower uh, and a more even distribution of air velocity and more even temperature in the occupied zone when use of cooling. Uh, so ceiling diffuser produces shorter throw, lower and more even distribution because uh, the spread is high and because of the larger spread, uh, so the even distribution of the air takes place. So uh, consequently, the entrainment uh, ratio of ceiling diffuser is say, comparatively better than the side diff, uh, side outlet diffuser or grill or register. So this is a uh, Primary inverter. Uh, this is an end view of so very short uh, throw as well as drop, but uh, it creates a longer spread, and because of this spread, there is a proper entrainment and reverse flow takes place. Uh, so the top view gives an exact idea. Uh, so it also uh, there is a possibility of uh, a stagnation area because of the shorter throw. The stagnation area is comparatively more here. So again, uh, ceiling diffusers are uh, not suitable for heating application, we can say. Uh, however, when used for heating, it is seen that a larger stagnation area is formed due to buoyancy effect. And ceiling diffusers are widely used for conditioned spaces with limited ceiling height and are designed to have a large entrainment ratio and are widely used in variable airflow systems. So for heating application, generally, uh, comparatively, uh, the side outlet, higher side outlets are suitable because there, uh, by increasing the jet velocity, we can in, uh, we can reduce the stagnation area. But in a ceiling diffusers, already the air velocity is very low uh, because of the uh, larger spread of air pattern, and that's why the stagnation area is more. Uh, so this is about the ceiling diffuser, pattern of ceiling diffuser. Uh, so this is a, one, a pictorial view of ceiling diffuser, how it spreads the air in all directions. Uh, so proper spreading is there, and because of the spreading, the entrainment ratio is high. Uh, then the pattern of uh, slot diffusers. So uh, the figure shows the air flow pattern obtained using slot diffusers installed in the ceiling in the perimeter and interior zone. So this is a perimeter side and the interior zone. The slot diffusers installed in the perimeter zone. Uh, so this is uh, in the perimeter zone and this is the interior zone. Uh, air uh, slot diffusers installed in the perimeter zone discharge air vertically downward. So it discharges air vertically downwards and also in the horizontal direction. So both vertical as well as horizontal direction it occupies. And due to its better surface effect, so its surface effect we can see here also in the interior zone, uh, the air jet remains in contact with the ceiling for a longer period and a reverse air stream ensures uh, uniformity of temperature and velocity in the occupied zone. And due to their superior characteristics and better aesthetics, Slot diffusers are widely used in large office spaces uh, with normal ceiling heights and with variable air velocity systems. So slot diffusers are uh, commonly used in offices where uh, there are large passage, passages are uh, there and where uh, because of uh, better surface effect, the air jet remains in contact with the surface, with the ceiling. Uh, for a longer period the reverse air stream uh, it creates and because of the reverse air stream uh, you can see uh, the reverse air stream here so because of this air reverse air stream uh, and there is a large spread of the air so that's why this ceiling diffuser sorry the slot diffusers are suitable in offices large offices has again a greater uh, entrainment ratio uh, then there are different types of flows uh, arises uh, during this air distribution system. So stratified mixing flow is one of the special type. Uh, generally buildings of very high uh, ceiling, uh, this type of uh, mixing process is desirable. Uh, it is more economical to stratify the condition uh, space into a stratified upper zone and a cooler 
lower zone. So it creates a zone uh, or it stratified the air into two zone, upper zone and lower zone. Uh, in such cases, the supply air outlet is located at the lower boundary of a, a cooled lower zone and the air jet is projected horizontally. Uh, this is the supply outlet. It generally fitted at the lower boundaries. So lower zone and lower boundary and it creates a horizontal jet. Uh, the cold air supply takes care of cooling load in the lower zone uh, due to windows, walls, occupants and equipment. The radiant heat from the roof uh, uh, upper external walls and lights installed in the roof enter the occupied zone and are converted into a cooling load with thermal light. So especially this is a stratified level. So uh, where uh, we, we have to create uh, this lower zone is uh, generally the air conditioning zone where it is mandatory to have a comfort conditions. So upper zone, uh, it is uh, generally filled with the warm air and it also acts as a resistance for convective heat flow from the outside. Uh, so, and exhaust is provided at the upper zone. So stratified mixing flow for summer cooling offers the following advantages. Uh, convective heat transfer from the hot roof is effectively blocked by the high temperature air in the stagnant upper zone. Uh, thus reducing the building cooling load. So the upper zone it creates as an insulation. Uh, so where the warm air present and same uh, the exhaust is provided at the upper zone. So location of return air inlet affects the cooling load only when they are located in the upper zone. So it doesn't affect means uh, there is uh, it is fitted at the upper zone. So this is a stratified stratified mixing flow is nothing but uh, uh, the air remains in two layers. In the lower zone, generally the conditioned air is maintained. And in the upper zone, uh, uh, generally the warm air is present, which also acts as a resistance to heat from the ceiling. Uh, cold air distribution is uh, another technique uh, which is generally uh, adopted. Uh, when chill water, uh, it is uh, cold air distribution means what? When chill water is available at lower temperature of about one to two degrees Celsius, Example given using uh, an ice storage system, uh, the supply air temperature can be reduced about 4.4 to 7 degrees Celsius instead of usual temperature of about 13 degrees Celsius. So in this case, uh, instead of uh, producing the air of higher temperature, that is 13 degrees Celsius, if we produce the air of having temperature 4.4 to 7.2 degrees Celsius, uh, it is beneficial because such systems is called as a cold air distribution system production of cold air then the uh, normal usual temperature air uh, and normal conventional air conditioning systems uh, the cold air is produced up to 13 to 17 degrees celsius but in cold air distribution the air temperature is further reduced that is uh, from 4 to 7 degrees celsius such a system is called as a cold air distribution system these systems offer the following advantages when compared with the conventional system. Uh, so due to lower dew point temperature, obviously if the uh, air temperature is low, the dew point temperature is also low. The space humidity can be maintained between 35 to 45% as a result of occupied space, can be maintained at slightly higher temperature causing discomfort. Uh, so it allows us to maintain uh, occupied space slightly higher temperature because uh, um, it maintains a lower dew point temperature. So space humidity can be maintained between 35 to 45 percent. So due to lower supply uh, temperature, the flow rate of supply air can be reduced significantly, leading to smaller duct and hence smaller building space required uh, requirement and associated benefits. So obviously the fan uh, velocity is reduced. So fan power is reduced. Uh, duct size is reduced. So these are the advantages of cold air distribution. Uh, due to lower flow rate, fan power consumption can be reduced uh, by as much as 40%. And noise level in the uh, condition space can be reduced due to reduced flow rates. Uh, this is about the uh, cold air distribution. Uh, then the third type is a spot cooling or heating. 
uh, this is generally used in workstation where there is a localized cooling is expected uh, so in this system cold or warm air jet is projected directly into the part of the occupied zone often called a target uh, zone so that a thermal environment can be controlled locally the spot that's why it is called the spot cooling so spot cooling and heating offers several advantages such as better control of temperature air purity and movement in the localized area thus improving the thermal comfort of the occupants uh, possibility of using greater outdoor air for ventilation and then highly localized loads can be handled very effect efficiently occupants have a greater control of their own uh, personalized environment uh, however spot Uh, cooling and heating have a certain disadvantage such as possibility of draft uh, discomfort due to air jet pressure uh, limited areas of environment uh, control and a complex air distribution system spot cooling system can be classified into industrial spot cooling systems they stop uh, uh, they stop uh, task air conditioning systems these are the two classes uh, where the localized uh, cooling is required as the name implies industrial spot cooling systems are used in large industrial areas such as a uh, large machine shops steel plants etc and desktop uh, task air conditioning system find application in large office buildings even uh, uh, the best practical example that uh, the air conditioning provided in our uh, air conditioning buses where the that is uh, localized for uh, the uh, separate diffusers are provided for each seat so according to the need we can uh, use that particular diffuser but uh, uh, sometimes it also causes a draft and discomfort uh, because of the air jet velocity so these are some patterns of uh, uh, spot cooling uh, that is in downward direction the air stream continuously flowing through the different slots uh and then the horizontal uh, flow and some specific area where the jets are produced this uh then while selecting this supply air outlets uh, uh it mainly depends on certain parameters uh, so first the requirement of indoor uh, environment control uh if the indoor uh, environment requires controlled air movement then high side outlets should not be used uh, because generally uh, uh, they produces a larger velocity uh, jet and uh, it may causes a discomfort to uh, the occupant or uh, the people uh, near to that particular jet and it is very difficult to or maintain the controlled air movement because there is all because of the low entrainment ratio uh, shape size and ceiling height of the building is also important uh, because depending upon this uh, the uh, diffusers are selected generally ceiling and slot diffusers are ideal for buildings with limited ceiling height for large buildings with large ceiling heights high side wall mounted outlets are recommended uh, volume flow rate per unit floor area that is a requirement uh, generally uh, side side wall outlets are limited to low specific volume flow rates uh, as they gives rise to a higher velocities in the occupied zone compared to slot diffusers ceiling diffusers uh, uh, which can handle efficiently a large volumetric flow rate so the uh, that uh, capturing the area is concerned uh, generally uh, the uh, ceiling and slot diffusers are more suitable uh, so it covers a more floor area uh, that's why where the large uh, office buildings are there the ceiling and slot diffusers are uh, comparatively efficient uh, then volume flow rate per outlet uh, that is the diffuser outlet the volume flow rate uh, per supply outlet depends on the throw required provide a satisfactory room air distribution for linear slot diffusers the volume flow rate per unit length is important its uh, value normally lies between 23 to 62 liters per second per meter square for linear per meter for linear slot diffusers 
in close office with floor area of about 14 meters square and only one external wall one ceiling diffuser is normally sufficient uh, so you can see the uh, different types of outlet depending upon the velocities uh, so generally for grills a uh, specific volume flow rate for per flow flow area that is 3 to 6 but the air changes per hour for 3 meter ceiling uh, it is more sorry 7 maximum slot diffuser 4 to 20 uh, then perforated panel that is 4.5 to 15 and the ceiling diffuser 4.5 to 25 so accordingly the maximum air changes required uh, that is 34 ceiling diffusers so more occupied space perforated panels is 18 and grills it occupies the less space that's why uh, depending upon the applications uh, generally if the more floor areas to be covered ceiling and slot diffusers are suitable rather than the grills uh, then throw is also important the high side wall outlets have a longer throw than ceiling diffusers uh, square ceiling diffusers and circular ceiling diffusers have a similar throw almost similar throw, um, but uh, uh, comparatively a shorter throw so uh, if uh, the designer expect throw then uh, generally high side wall outlets are suitable noise level is also important it should not create any noise uh, so according to accordingly the velocity is adjusted uh, then the total pressure drop or pressure loss of supply air as it flows through a slot diffuser of 19 mm width is normally between 12 to 15 50 pascals whereas it is between 5 to 50 pascals for ceiling diffuser uh, normally the pressure loss across the supply outlet should not exceed 50 pascals so slot diffuser comparatively produces a less pressure drop uh, because it's it's it, it straight uh, uh, ejection of uh, the air in uh, ceiling diffusers uh, generally the, the, because of the higher spread uh, there is a pressure drop is comparatively high and even the high side wall the pressure drop is not that much high so the pressure drop is also important characteristics and lastly the uh, cost and appearance uh, so uh, finally the cost and appearance of the supply air outlets also have to be considered depending upon the specific applications uh, so aesthetic point of view also uh, ceiling diffusers have a different models even slot diffusers are also uh, have a different configurations uh, but uh, the light proffer diffusers are uh, more suitable for aesthetic point of view because it uh, comes along with the light assembly as well uh, so these are uh, eight uh, selection guidelines uh, for selection of any supply outlets. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we have completed this topic. Uh, and at the end of this topic, you should illustrate different types of diffusers, uh, mainly grill and register, then ceiling diffuser, slot diffusers, light or proffer diffusers. Uh, so these are the different four types and they are uh, you should be able to discuss the flow pattern of these diffusers, uh, how the flow pattern uh, develops, uh, means uh, for example, the characteristics associated with the flow pattern that is a throw, then a drop on the spread angle. So all these characteristics we can uh, recognize or investigate with the help of flow pattern. So uh, investigation of flow pattern is also necessary. Uh, so various experimental as well as uh, CFD techniques are used to investigate the flow pattern of different types of diffusers. So uh, types of diffuser is also one area of research. So continuously the models are uh, changing for better entrainment ratio than uh, throw and drop depending upon the applications because the uh, mixing of air streams that is primary air stream and secondary air stream that is room air is important. Uniform mixing is a uh, again a major requirement of air distribution system there should not be uh, the temperature variation more than one degree celsius and the velocity also should not exceed 136 meter per second so for uh, all this this flow pattern needs to be uh, studied for every model uh, you should be able to explain the what is mean by cold air distribution what is uh, the stratified mixing flow uh, and uh, finally you should be able to select 
the supply air outlets as per the requirement depending upon the selection parameters. Uh, so with this, we have completed the unit number four as well. Uh, so the next uh, lecture onwards, we'll start the fifth unit, and that is heat transmission to the building structures. Thank you very much. <laughs>